So I recently got a comment on my how to switch desktop environments on Linux video that reminded me of a major problem with the way we as a community introduce new users to Linux and specifically which distribution to choose. The thing about Linux that confuses people not in the know is that there is no one operating system that you can just download and install called Linux. Rather, there are many different distributions or flavors of Linux. Hundreds of them, actually. I know we, as a community, have grown to appreciate this wide variety of choice, since we can pick a distro tailored for our particular use case, whether that be running a server, using it as a router, reviving old hardware, doing software development, creative work, or gaming, or even just running it on a normal PC as our daily driver. The problem is, this wide variety of choice leaves potential new users lost because they don't know which distribution to choose. Even worse, when people ask which distribution to choose, we just give them something like this. A big, long list of every single distribution in existence and just say, choose one, without taking the time to explain which distributions are suited for which use cases and which type of users. What ends up happening is the beginners end up going with something like Arch Linux, which is not suited for beginners. If you've been with my channel for a while, first of all, you rock. Second, you may remember a video I made a few years ago where I talked about 10 mistakes new Linux users make, one of them was choosing the wrong distribution. This is exactly what happened to the commenter that I was talking about. From what I understand, someone told him, oh, switching to Linux is easy, but never bothered to explain which distro to choose, so they ended up choosing the wrong one. Now, in case you're an Arch Linux diehard, before you go bash me in the comments. Actually, please do that. It would really help the video. No, Arch Linux is not designed for a new user. I don't care that it now has an easy install command. This is for two main reasons. First of all, its CLI-based installation process is not intuitive for a new user. Even with the handy Arch install command, the user is still required to make choices about for example, what desktop environment and audio server they want, if any. A brand new user won't know what these options are, let alone what to choose for their use case. Second, Arch Linux is what's known as a rolling release distribution. This means that its software is kept constantly up to date, so you always have the latest and greatest software. Problem is, Latest and greatest can often mean buggy, since the software doesn't have much time to be tested before being released. Now, I know it's pretty easy to work around this by like, holding back packages so they don't get updated and lagging behind the latest updates by a couple weeks, but a new user won't know that they should do this with the rolling release like Arch Linux. And then they complain when they experience weird bugs, sometimes which prevent them from getting their work done because of the beta quality software. This is a big reason why there's still this notion that Linux is hard to use and why many would-be users are turned off with Linux. So if you're looking to switch to Linux from Windows or Mac OS, which distribution should you choose? For someone new to Linux, my first choice would be Ubuntu. It's designed with the new user in mind, so it will be kind to you right out of the gate. Its installer is very intuitive. In fact, it even has checkboxes that allow you to essentially say, yes, I want to be able to play music. Yes. I want to be able to play games, and I'll basically install those proprietary codecs and drivers for you. On top of that, Ubuntu has the advantage of being ridiculously popular. So most Linux programs and how-to guides 
will be written with in mind. I found this to be invaluable when I first switched to Linux. Now, I understand for some people Ubuntu is not their jam. Try Linux Mint. Its desktop is actually configured to resemble Windows by default. On top of that, it's based on Ubuntu, so it's able to take advantage of Ubuntu's excellent community support. Unlike Arch, Ubuntu and Linux Mint follow a stable release model. This means that their software is not the most up-to-date, but it's pretty stable just because it had a lot more time for testing before being released. And I know Pop! OS is a great distribution for gamers. It's actually based on Ubuntu too. The only disadvantage with Pop! OS, in particular for a new user, is that it's not easy to install on a dual boot, unlike Ubuntu and Linux Mint, which offer an install alongside option in their installers when they detect another operating system already installed, such as Windows. You see, it's not enough to just tell people, here's your options, choose one. You actually have to take the time to explain the options and even recommend one or two based on the person's needs. After all, if you're a salesperson at a computer store and someone walks in looking for a new computer, are you going to show them every single computer that you have in stock? No. You're gonna show them one or two based on their needs. I just wanted to make this video because I feel that this is one area where the Linux community has completely and utterly failed. Another thing that I feel needs to be explained to potential new users is that Linux is not Windows. You cannot use Linux like you use Windows. They are two completely different operating systems. Now, I know this might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised at how many would-be users are turned off with Linux because they went into it expecting Windows. For example, many people, when they are new to Linux, try installing software the same way that they would on Windows. Run to the website, download the EXE, and run the setup. Well, it doesn't work that way on Linux. On Linux, you have these things called package managers, which give you a selection of software that you can download and install with just a couple clicks kind of like an app store on your phone. Also, not all Windows software is available on Linux. The two big ones that get a lot of people are Microsoft Office and the Adobe Creative Cloud. So switching to a new operating system may also mean switching to new programs to get your work done. Other examples of people expecting Windows include trying to use the Windows directory hierarchy on Linux, like backslashes, drive letters, worrying about defragmentation and antivirus, and even assuming that updates will be done for you the way they're basically forced on you on Windows. The point is, if we want more people to switch to Linux, we can't just say Linux is easy and call it a day. We actually need to take the time to explain to potential new users not only which distribution to choose, but also what to expect when switching to Linux. And that's it for this video. Be sure to give it a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you next time.